Hi and welcome to video number four where we're going to discuss different kinds of uh, pools. So uh, in the last video I showed you an object pool where we actually dependent on so the difference between the pools can be for example when should they be released. So in the example that we created in the last video or I created in the last video um, the amount of objects is actually based on the speed. See, there are 53. If I go to um, here where I set the speed to 10, if I set that to 5, it doubles the amount of objects. And that is because the amount of objects in the object pool is not fixed. In many cases, when we create object pools, we want to have a fixed amount of rocks, for example. So let's say uh, it could be that um, we know that we only have memory for 200 of these. So we could actually implement, you can imagine that, that we can actually implement something like a pool size in here. So that if we reach that pool size, we cannot create any more uh, rocks for now. So we would have to handle that also from the outside. So what if we want to create something and we are not allowed to do that? We have to handle that. We could use exceptions or we could just have a simple Boolean or whatever. Also, this is uh, kind of a game scenario. There is a lot of other scenarios. For example, if you are doing something like connections to a database, um, it is uh, something that you often see that um, then you have a connection pool. So if you have a connection to some database, uh, it often takes a lot of time to establish the connection. So there's some handshake and stuff going on here and it takes some time to establish that. So if you're doing small things like just a small update or reading something, this is really show, uh, slow. So one of the things you can do is you can create like a connection pool, which is also object pool pattern. And this is also already implemented. You can look that up, connection pool. And then you, for example, you say you can have four connections at a time and you can queue all the things that you want to do and then uh, take them one at, uh, one at a time here. This is one way to do it, just like I queued, uh, queued these operations like this. So this is an example of, uh, of what you can use uh, the pool for. You could also do other things. This is based on a fixed size. This was based on things going out of scope. You could also have out of scope being something like timeout. So you could say, um, uh, some object needs to live for some amount of time. If you imagine a very big game where you, uh, I don't know, you pick some apples on a tree three kilometers away from, from where you are, you are over here in the game and you can't actually see further than this and you've, you're far roaming around here somewhere. It would be very expensive to keep objects here so at some point, based on the distance or based on distance and time or something like that, you could say, OK, um, I'm just ignoring that I ever saw that that tree and saying, yes, when I come back, it magically just grew back here. You've probably seen that in some games because you can't remember the whole world. So you have to do some kind of pooling for things not to get out of hand memory memory wise or storage wise. Right. So you only remember the most important things. So there's a lot of pooling uh, uh, going on there. So that could be timeout, could be uh, based on distance, could be based on uh, something like importance or whatever. So there are many different kinds of, uh, of connection pools here that you can use. Yeah, I also try to use pooling sometimes. For example, if I had some uh, big uh, calculation problem that I needed to solve, I created, for example, I created a pool of, uh, of threads, like a thread pool. Thread pool, because th threads are also very expensive. 
like connections. So if you have a lot of very small tasks that you have some threads, you can have like uh, four threads in a pool. And then you can hand them small tasks all the time and wait for them to finish and then keep handling. So this way, the different threads here, they will actually um, work much more efficiently because if you have to create a thread, do a very small task and and uh, close the thread again, create a new thread, it will be very, very slow. So this is also something where you often see this. And you can also uh, look at thread pool. This is also already implemented. So whenever you have something that is expensive, like creating images in this case, or something like that, you would want to use uh, object pooling. And it's very much, much used in things like uh, games where you need efficiency. Okay, so that is it for the object pool pattern. So if you're interested, I'm going to show how the observer pattern applied in my videos about the observer pattern.